Hello and welcome to an announcement for the release of a cool new and exciting feature called Hooks that we just added to Cal Protocol. Um, this augments the trade intent language that we have to also be allow users to specify with their orders additional Ethereum calls, so these uh, inner transactions, if you will, alongside their order. Uh, users can specify things to run before they their order actually swap executes, but also to run after, um, allow enabling you to you know set up what you need to do for the swap. So unstaking. Um, setting allowances, claiming airdrops, et cetera, uh, but also after the swap, bridging, restaking your proceeds, um, et cetera, whatever you can think of. So uh, if you, there's a lot of really cool things that can be done with this new feature, and we just show good, have a demo today to show a couple of these things and hopefully get uh, the creativity of the wider cow community uh, you know, kick-started in order to start implementing more and more of these. All right, so without further ado, uh, let me present to you Mr. 0xDA3, 3BA5. This is an account that's received uh, some USDC. Um, let's pretend that you receive it, yeah, for whatever reason, and you receive it into an account that you don't want associated with your main account, so you have no ETH here, but you want to be able to do stuff with this money. Um, right, so with Cow. You can uh, you can you can use this hooks feature in order to uh, to trade despite not having any ETH. Um, sp specifically, we make use of um, so what's important here is we have USDC, and USDC supports a very nice feature called um, permit, which allows allowances to be set using an off-chain signature, and can, they can be set by anyone. So we make use of this in order to. Uh, set up the required pre-hook, as we call it, uh, to trade with this account without ever needing any Ether. Right, so without further ado, we can jump straight into code. Um, we just have some basic setup and a config and sort of contract definitions for the smart contracts that we make use for in the script. And we could just already go to the order that we want. So we receive this USDC, but what we really want is cow. I mean, who doesn't? <laughs> The amount that we're trading is 200, which is the amount that we hold in this account. And yeah, so the first order of business is to create the uh, EIP 2612 permit um, hook that we need in order to set the required allowance to trade with this account on Cal Protocol. Um, this is mostly straightforward. We just have the permit parameters. We sign using EIP 712, which is this is also specified by the permit standard. And then we set up our hook to call the USDC contract um, with the permit call and with uh, an appropriate gas limit. So in our example, we also want to do something even more fancy because just setting permits isn't super cool. I mean, you can do this on most other protocols, uh, but we also want to bridge the token proceeds that we receive. So we were going to receive cow and we want to send them uh, to Gnosis chain uh, as atomically as part of this swap. Um, this message was sponsored by Gnosis Chain. <laughs> Joking aside, um, we needed, uh, because we need to do this permissionlessly, we actually needed a little bit of on-chain infrastructure for this. Uh, so bridging assumes that the tokens are being sent from message.sender, uh, but obviously you can't set up uh, a call from an EOA within a transaction. So we, we create an intermediary account, which we call this bridge account. Um, that uh, does one and one thing only, which is b managing a user's uh, tokens for bridging. So it allows anyone to actually execute the bridging transaction and it sort of hard codes the user which is tied to this bridge account. We also have this uh, bridger factory contractor to recreate, uh, which we developed and uh, for this demo, which has some basically just, it creates bridging accounts per user uh, using create two, so they're at deterministic addresses. So you you know which address to send the proceeds of your funds, even with the bridge account not being set up for this particular user. Um, right. So one thing to note is that this contract has not been audited, so use this at your own risk. Uh, goes without saying. Uh, and the also the other sort of important takeaway from this is that um, the hooks are sort of are executed from an unprivileged environment which means that in theory, any basically any address could be the address that's calling these hooks. 
uh, as such, they should be designed with this in mind. Uh, there's no strong on-chain guarantees that the hooks get executed as part of an order. Instead, they're you know guaranteed as part of the protocol. But this also means that you know uh, a misbehaving uh, malicious entity, if they were to not execute your hooks with your order, um, they there's an upper bound to the to the damage that could be repaid from their bond. So keep that in mind when designing these. Right, to go back to our scripts, so we just set up a pre-hook, uh, sorry, post-hook that just bridges everything, and that's it. So now we have our two hooks, our permit and our bridge, and now we can add them to our order. Um, so previously, this uh, we had this app data field that were part, was part of orders that was just a hash, but now this has been expanded to be um, arbitrary JSON data, and specifically, we have a, uh, a, a section for specifying hooks. Um, this, uh, what's, what's interesting about this is that the app data is actually included in the order that we sign. Uh, so we here in the app data, and it is the KKK hash of the JSON, which means that the actual hook preferences that you add with your order are signed by the user. And this allows us to verify that indeed the hooks are, you know, well, they're actually signed and they actually, um, is exactly what the user wants and just, and makes it so uh, no one can um, alter the actual things that you the actual pre and post hooks that you that you are specifying. Right, and then the rest isn't super interesting. It's just creating a cow protocol order. So first we get a quote, and then uh, we get a we compute the actual order for signing. We add a little one percent here um, of uh, slippage tolerance to our to our buy amount. We sign the order and then we place it on, um, yeah, then we place it to, to cow protocol for it to execute. So without further ado, let's run this. Uh, so haha, I used environment variable, so the private key won't leak. Nice try. So we see that the account is the same. We compute the hooks, the order, and the, yeah. And then we get the quotes and we see here that the quote also includes our app data, which has the pre and post hooks encoded in here, uh, which hashes to this value. And yeah, so this is the, the total order. Notice the receiver here. This is a uh, the deterministic bridge account for the, um, for the order. So actually what's interesting here is that we have before the order executes, there is nothing here. There is no contract. This is uh, gets created um, yeah, just in time during the post hook. So I guess now we can follow our order. Oops. So while we wait for this to execute, here is the order. And yes, this should eventually execute. Uh, in the meantime, we can take a look at this bridger contract where, uh, as you can see, the account that we use for the receiver, which is what is this sort of bridge account, is determined, uh, is like sort of computed deterministically based on a user address. So one of these gets deployed per user. Ah, we see that now there's a contract. That means that something happened. If we go back to our order, it is indeed filled. Um, we can see that the, uh, here, that you know, we have no tokens. We don't have any ETH, so this account never had anything, never traded any ETH, nothing ever happened. Like, um, as if nothing ever happened, it only ever held USDC tokens. As you can see, it's never made a transaction in its life. We've just have the input, the 200 USDC that we got. Um, and then we also have uh, it going back to the, cal to, to the settlement contract. Um, here we have our settlement. Uh, notably, we see that we have an approval that is being made on USDC to the settlement, to the relay contract for the amount that's being traded. This is through our uh, permit uh, pre hook, which was called here. And at the very end, we also have a tokens bridge, uh, bridge initiation for the cow that we received from our order. And um, we should after some time for the bridging, see, oh, I have some, oh yeah, this is 
wrapped girly ETH. We should see this account also receive the cow tokens. Um, I think there's a certain number of blocks you have to wait for it to happen, so I'm not going to sit around here at the video waiting for it, but uh, you can come back to this address <laughs> and see it uh, later on. Uh, thank you for listening to me ramble, and I hope you all have a very nice day.